What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to do roads and curbs in Revit. Uh, now I already have one tutorial that I have done a while back and it was quite successful uh, but the thing is uh, after uh, a few years uh, uh, Revit has changed and with the Revit 2020 and Revit tw uh, 2019 we have the option to adapt our railing to a topo surface. Now this changes the game for roads in Revit because you can use the railing tool to create the curbs and uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing in this uh, today's tutorial. So I'm going to be showing you how to sketch out the roads, all of the tips and tricks that go with that to save you a lot of headaches, uh, so how to how to accomplish everything without uh, or in the quickest possible time with uh, the least headaches. So that's what this is all about. Uh, now if you want to download the project file that I'm going to be creating in this tutorial check out my Patreon, first link in the description, also there you can find some of my advanced Balkan architect courses if that's something you're interested. And also one more thing before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make multiple Revit tutorials each week and one of those advanced Balkan architect courses, again as I said, first link in the description. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. To make it easier for everyone, I'm going to start off with a blank project and then I'm going to be modeling everything within this project. Uh, now, I'm just going to go here to models and then to new. Uh, as far as templates, I'm going to choose the architectural template and then let's click OK. Uh, as soon as Revit starts up, what I'm going to be doing is changing the units. Now, you can find that here under manage and then project uh, project units, here we go, project units, or you can use the shortcut UN to get that same uh, dialog. And here I'm just going to change the length from millimeters into centimeters, I just prefer working in centimeters. And of course, if you're using the imperial system, go ahead and use whatever you use in the imperial system. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, so to place any massing or any site here, the topo surface, we're going to be modeling everything as a topo surface. Uh, to place it, you can't really see it here in uh, level one uh, or any floor plans, just because the uh, view range settings and all of that is set in such a way that it's basically not visible. Uh, your uh, your topo surface is not going to be visible here. So what you need to do is go uh, here to the site plan and now you can start creating your topo surface. Uh, so just click here on topo surface and then for the first points I'm going to add just a string of points here on the bottom just like this and they're all going to be elevation zero. Uh, then I'm going to do uh, one line at like 100 and then here I'm going to add a few of those at 100. Maybe we can select this one and stretch it out a little bit. Okay, so once we have these, uh, let's uh, move on. Uh, let's go here to place point. Let's add a few here at 300. So change this to 300 and then you add the 300 points. There we go. Okay, now let's change this to 700. Oops. There we go, and let's add a few points there. So that's going to be somewhere over here. And finally, let's go with 800, and that's going to be the final one, and that's going to be located over here. So as you can see, I'm just adding four points, and I'm using these elevation markers that you can see on all four sides, uh, just to kind of measure things out. Now, of course, you can do this, uh, make sure you've, you're fitting your project. Here, I'm just doing it like this. Uh, now, when placing these points, what I like to do is kind of move them in, so they're uh, going uh, like, not in a circle, but almost like in a circle. So you don't want these to go to the inside, you want them actually to be on the outside just like that. So as you can see when you turn these in it goes like that and when you get this high angle that means that something is wrong. If you go into 3D you're going to notice that here if you s turn this in you're going to get this vertical line and you don't want that. And if you move it out a little bit that line is gone. Uh, so just uh, keep that in mind. Make sure that these are all on the outside. Uh, go back to site plan, then go to the other side. Yeah, here this one, as you can see, is on the inside. So let's move it out. And there we go. Okay, so we have our topo surface. And uh, for now, I'm pretty, much pretty happy with it. I just want to add the platform here for my parking lot. So for that, let's go back into our site plan. 
and here in site plan let's go to place point and uh, these are going to be placed at 400 so oops 400 there we go okay so these uh, 400 points are going to be placed like this so this is where uh, that parking spot is going to be located and here we have a point down here it's at 300 so let's select that one and delete it now you can go here into 3d just to see what that looks like uh, we can set it up a bit more here in the site plan so maybe extend this a little bit there we go just like that just give it a bit room uh, and then also what I'm going to be doing here is perhaps going like this there we go maybe moving this closer here this can stay at 300 I just want to add a couple of more of these 400 points there and then perhaps even here uh, just so we can have uh, have the road match this so if we go here into 3d yeah, I think this will be enough. Uh, one more thing that I like to do is just do a quick measurement. So here I want to have like 1400 centimeters and we almost have that. So let's move this out a little bit, move this in. There we go. I'm happy with the way this turned out. Okay, so now the now that I have this all uh, placed out, let, let me just hit finish and there we go. We have our topo surface and now if we go into 3D, it looks like this. Uh, maybe it's better to go with a shaded view or something like that or even uh, consistent colors or maybe even realistic. Uh, realistic is a bit dark because this is currently like this earth color but you get a point you can see the geometry when you orbit this around okay let's go back to shaded perhaps okay so uh, once we have all of this uh, modeled out the next thing that I like to do is I like to sketch out my roads uh, so uh, you might be tempted to go straight into split surface and split everything out and create your road uh, but uh, it's actually a good idea to go here under maybe either annotation or architecture you can use these uh, model lines or you can go into annotation and use detail lines now I prefer using detail lines because they're just view specific and uh, the reason for this is just because uh, when you create your roads uh, and if you just leave them like that you're not going to be able to select those lines for some reason that's why we have to use these detail lines first just so we can make those lines selectable and if it doesn't make any sense currently don't worry it will uh, when we get to that so I want to have one line like this and uh, actually let's see so let's go maybe with medium lines and let's set this up in a different color so it it's kind of popping out so for that I'm just going to go here to manage uh, additional settings align styles open this menu up now this is just an extra step that I like to do you don't have to do it and here go to medium lines and let's turn them to I don't know like blue hit ok apply ok and there we go so these lines are now blue I, I like that Okay, let's go here. I can just differentiate from the other colors. So uh, other lines. So let's go back into detail lines and just make sure it, here it says uh, medium lines. And then the other one I want it to be at 600 centimeters, just like that. So this is the uh, bottom road. This is the road on top. So it should go like this. There we go. And it should be connected uh, over here in this side again 600 uh, centimeters now here let's go just like this inside and this shouldn't be 1400 just so I can fit everything now for this distance uh, it should be around let's see uh, so I need about 500 centimeters for one parking spot another 500 for the other and then uh, 600 in the middle so let's go with 1600 that's what I need there we go and then let's just go to detail lines and let's just close this off over here maybe we can select oops these two lines and then move this whole thing a bit inside there we go I'm happy with this and then uh, you would just use here I uh, go to the modify and then use a split line uh, or split element tool to kind of split these and then you go with trim and extend and you trim and extend these just like that and then finally one more step that you have to do and that's uh, go here to annotate uh, go to your detail line and now here you have the fillet option so just go here with the fillet arc and let's set it to I don't know like 300 and then let's do that here 
or maybe even 500 yeah let's go with 500 here do the same thing here down here here and here okay there we go so we have everything sketched out uh, I'm happy with this sketch for now now once you have this now you can start splitting the surface and creating your roads so you need to go here to masking and site and here we have the split surface tool so you select that and then you select the surface that you want to split in this case that is this road and just keep in mind that you can only split a surface into two pieces so that means that we have to do this in parts so just go here with pick lines and then you just hover over one of the lines hit the tab key and then you select the whole chain of lines and then once you click you get everything and now as you can see this is splitting our surface into this inner part and this outer part now we hit finish to do that first split then we go to split surface again we select the outer surface and then let's go with pick lines again I hover over one of these hit the tab key once make the selection and then hit finish so this is the second split and we have to split this upper part and the lower part as well so again split surface select the surface pick lines this line finish and just repeat that one more time for the bottom line over here and there we go okay so here we have this middle one that's supposed to be representing the road and the rest is supposed to be grass so I'm just going to hold the control key and to select everything except the road so just like this then go here to the properties panel and here we have material and here I can choose a different material so let's type in grass and I, I prefer using the plant option you can use the grass I find it to be a bit too dark so that's why I go with the plant it's just it's same it's grass but it's just lighter as you can see from this image so let's just hit apply and OK and there we go and now if we go into 3d it looks uh, like this maybe if we go into realistic there we go and now let's just change this to well asphalt or whatever the uh, street is supposed to be made of so uh, let's go here into material let's type in asphalt and here we have asphalt paving pavement there we go so select that one and there we go we have pretty much everything as far as the roads and uh, the rest of the surface now of course we need to add that curb that's going to make everything look much nicer and also one more thing usually your road is going to be a bit lower than uh, your grass or whatever it's kind of a bit inside so what you can do is maybe go here into let's go into site plan uh, let's do a section through this whole thing just like this uh, maybe extend it and then just double click here on the head to open that section up there you go so now you can select just your road and then you can maybe move it down by 10 centimeters and now if you go into 3D, this is what that looks like. And don't worry, we're going to be filling this opening up in just a second. So there we go. We have uh, that road that's kind of below that level. Uh, now to create our uh, to create our curb uh, for that, we have to use uh, go here to architecture and then using uh, use the railing tool. Here we go, railing tool. But before we can do that, we need to add a new rail profile that we're going to be using for uh, for this. So uh, just go here to file and then go to new uh, family. And here let's search for metric profiles. Here we have multiple profiles. Uh, one of these should be rail. There we go, railing profile. Let's open that up. So this is the top of the rail. Uh, that's fine, we can use this. And then just go with line and then uh, let's go ahead and create something so this is going to be uh, this is going to be centered on the on that ground surface so what they want to do is something that looks like this yeah let's go with something that looks like this and then uh, what I like to do is kind of center it and let's do 50 uh, millimeters on each side making it a total of 100 and then the depth can be something like one let's go with 200 yeah there we go and then uh, one more thing I'm going to go here to create then line and then let's go with the fillet arc tool and then let's use fillet arc here and do something like this 
there we go okay uh, or you can maybe go like this like do a straight line yeah maybe this looks like a curb even more okay so once we have this uh, created uh, we need to load it into the project but before uh, we can do that we have to save it always save your family before loading it into the project just so it doesn't have this ugly family one name and uh, it's going to save you a lot of trouble r later on so just go here to save and I'm just going to save it on desktop and let's call it uh, curb profile There we go, hit enter, and now you can load this into the project and just close it off. So let's load that in. Here we go, we're back into the project. So let's go into 3D and let's go here to railing. Start the command and now let's create a new rail. Uh, now you want to go here uh, with one of these. I'm going to go with the pipe. Uh, you can choose either one of these and then set it up. But I suggest you either go with the rectangular one or the pipe. The glass panel is a bit more complex so it's hard to modify. So let's go with pipe. Go here into edit type, duplicate it and let's give it a new name like curb. There we go. And then here for the railing structure, this is where you add all of those rails. So uh, we really only need one of these. So let's select this one, hit delete, 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 and only the one. And the height should be zero and the name should be curb. There we go. And the profile should be our curb profile family. And for the material, just go with something white for now. I'm just going to go with the gypsum wall board as that's the whitest material that we have here. And for the offset and height, let's just leave that all at zero. Hit apply. Okay, and here we have the option for top rail, uh, get rid of that. And the baluster placement, uh, let's get rid of those. So just select all of these and set them to none. You can actually go and go with control C. And then uh, let's go like this. There we go. And then just go with none for all of those. We don't want any balusters. Same thing here. There we go. So once all of these are set to none, you just click OK. OK again, and there we go, we have our new family. Uh, now this family needs to be set and then updated to the terrain. So to do so, uh, you need to go here to the site plan and then use these detail lines to go with pick lines. You just go like this, and then uh, I suggest you just move it a bit inside. So it's uh, within the boundaries of the topo surface, just like that. There we go, looks good. Now let's go into 3D and hit finish. Now let's find that family. Okay, it's here, but as you can see, it's a bit low. Uh, the reason for that, it's currently on the ground, and as you can see, it's facing the wrong side. So to fix that, uh, we should have a flip grip here, and maybe go to the side plan, and then, okay, here we go, here's the flip grip, so just flip it, go into 3D. There we go, now it's facing the right side, but now you can select it zoom out a little bit and then go with pick new host and then pick this host and there we go so now it's following that host but of course as you can see this is quite simple let's try it with something a bit more difficult like this one here so for that one let's go to site I go again to railing I go with pick lines hover over one of these lines hit the tab key and there we go we have the full line and now again uh, as we did previously just pull this in a little bit so it's on the inside uh, of this whole topo surface. There we go. And uh, once this is all in check, go into 3D, hit finish, uh, orbit all the way around. Okay, so here it's facing the right side, it's just not on the right, uh, it's not on the right host, it's on the ground, on level one. So just go here to pick new host, select the grass, so always go with the grass, not with the, uh, not with the asphalt. So select the grass, and there we go, so should be updated. Should be going there all the way around, and it is. So as you can see, it's going all the way around. Now you might have these trouble spots, and if you do have those, uh, what you can do to fix it a little bit, go into edit path, let's see, so let's hit finish, let's see where that is. Okay, so it's here somewhere. Okay, so here it's where it's having all the trouble, so let's go into site go into edit path and then what I'll do is just select this and move it in a tad. So I just use the arrow key just to move it in just so slightly. So just slightly in, hit finish, 
and now if we go into 3D as you can see now it's properly uh, arranged so if it's having any trouble like that so as you can see here we have the same problem so I'm going to go out select this so just using the arrow keys to nudge it slightly inside hit finish and there we go looks much better and then you just do the same process for the rest of these so you go to the site plan you go to railing uh, you go with pick lines use the detail lines that you have already created select it here and immediately here just to uh, not to have those problems I'm just going to zoom in and move it slightly off axis towards the grass go into 3d hit finish check the orientation first so it's the wrong orientation use the flip grip now it's on the right side, pick new host, select the grass, and there we go, it's finished. Uh, yeah, maybe move this inside a little bit. Okay, it's a bit tricky to do this in 3D. I don't know why I'm doing it in 3D, but oh, it's easy enough. Hit finish, and there we go. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's how you do curbs in Revit, and that's how you do terrain in Revit. Now, keep in mind, again, as I said, this is only uh, possible in either Revit 2019 or Revit 2020, where you have the option to adapt or pick a new host for railing and then select topography. If you're using one of the earlier versions, I have a tutorial how to do that in those. It's a bit more difficult, but it gets the job done. So that's going to be linked in the description of this video. And also, if you want to download this project file or any of my other Revit project files, uh, check out my Patreon. That's going to be the first link in the description. And also there you can uh, get started on some of my advanced Balkan Architect courses. These are all over one hour long and I go in depth into some of uh, Revit's more complex topics and just show you everything. It's a long form uh, format. I've got over 35 hours on there so far and it's basically supposed to uh, let you master a topic in Revit in under an hour. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this uh, tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video and if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.